Sage Wanderer here and welcome to Prepping 101. So today I wanted to show you guys um, my version of a bug out bag. Now many of you have seen my bug out bag video and seen my big backpack that I called a bug out bag or a get home bag. And um, but then I've uh, suffered a pretty significant knee injury. Good news is it's healing. It may it may bounce back. I'm not accepting surgery at this point. I'm going to try physical therapy for a while and see how I can continue to heal and see if it's going to uh, uh, maybe get completely back to its old self. But anyway, with the bad knee, I couldn't carry the big, heavy backpack with all of the stuff in it. So I needed to create something that was a bit lighter and more maneuverable. And so I've been considering a thing called a bailout bag for a long time. And the idea it really comes, I think, from law enforcement and SWAT that if you just had to show up on a scene and bail out and be ready for duty, you would grab a bailout bag. Now, I found this one at my local gun shop, and I don't think they knew what it was because they were calling it a range bag. But trust me, this is not a range bag. This is a very specialized piece of equipment. The good news is they're really cheap. I mean... Okay, so let's get something straight from the get-go. This is a satchel. It's not a purse. It's not a purse. It's a satchel. <laughs> but this satchel-sized uh, bag here uh, is... It's got a lot of hidden features. So let's talk about the bag itself. It's very affordable at $26. You can find this bag on LA Police Gear. LAPG, LA Police Gear uh, site. I didn't get anything for that. It's just to let you know where you can find it. Like I said, I found this at my local firearm shop. They thought it was a range bag. But anyway, so uh, I got it for the same money I would have gotten it if I bought it from L.A. Police Gear, but I got it from them. So let's get to get to the bag itself. As you can see here, you got your standard Velcro patch there. You can put whatever you like. I got my blue stripe thing there. But anyway, um, and they're my knife's here so this kind of looks like something outdoorsy or bug out bag or something but when you flip it around it can be a little more deceiving so now this starts to look more like a camera bag and intentionally so these are pistol magazines but <laughs> to the untrained eye they might be seen as battery packs for my Nikon camera so this bag came camouflaged as a Nikon camera bag which I totally dig and if the, if the magazines didn't tip you off, then I'll tip you off now. There is a firearm in this bag. So let's show you where I keep it, take it out, make it safe, and then we'll continue. So in this hidden compartment right here, separated with Velcro, is my 9mm, kind of awkward position, practical, tactical. And so this weapon is... Uh, uh, it's got, we'll, we'll do a whole video on this piece, but let's just un, uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, make it safe. See, it's empty, nothing in it. Okay, past that. So that's the biggest Glock I think they make, is the uh, the 34 Practical Tactical 9mm. Um, so it's it's very large gun. It fit in there no problem. You really had no idea it was there. These are not battery packs. These are 33 round magazines from uh, Glock. So I have uh, 33 times 3 plus a standard 17. So you do the math. I have well over 100 rounds plus what's in the gun <clears throat> to uh, help me with whatever comes my way. So that's the business side of this. Now this is what I call a escape and evasion bag. I made this so that I, if I just had to grab something and run, and I didn't have time to uh, grab my big bug out bag, that I would have the basic essentials in here for survival long term. So there's not just food and water and things in here, there's also resupply items that would be very important for me, uh, items that would allow me to get resupplied rather. So there's snare and fishing and hunting gear in this bag as well. So let's uh, let's start to break it out. Uh, let's start with my choice of canteens. So this is a canteen here. Uh, before I take it out, I have to remove some things though. So uh, you can't go anywhere without your titanium spoon. <laughs> it's long enough to go all the way in the bottom of my canteen if I need to fish something out from inside my canteen, or if I use my canteen itself for cooking. So uh, then I go ahead and pull the canteen itself out. Now this. 
I have a lot of food stored in and around here, so let's take some of that out. I've got coffee, obviously. I got some Slim Jims. But nesting perfectly, everything is really packed in here nice. But nesting perfectly inside this Sierra Cup is my canteen system. And I had to here wrapped with a bandana to help with heat. But this is a single walled, clean canteen, stainless steel canteen. Being Don't, don't uh, get a vacuum sealed one because you can't put them on a fire, they'll explode. But this has a single stainless steel wall so you can boil your water right here inside your canteen, which is a huge advantage when surviving. And I have a cup here as well for various cooking and uh, coffee, obviously. I don't go anywhere without my coffee. I gotta have my coffee. So there's the canteen. And we'll start a food pile over here and we'll go through that food pile because I have food kind of like ratted away in every little corner of this. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the stuff that I have right on top. Of course, coffee, because you know I got to have the coffee. But pair of socks. So I might be running into the wilderness in flip-flops for all I know. Now I keep boots with socks inside of them in the trunk of my car that I would probably grab along with this. But in case I don't, at least I have some dry, wool, warm socks to put on. Because uh, I don't know what kind of little flimsy sock I might be wearing. Or what kind of shoe for that matter. But at least my feet will get warm. Belt. I might not have a belt on. And as soon as I start running, my pants might start falling down. So I, I definitely want to carry a strong utility belt that is... Uh, this one's made out of Kodora nylon and it has a very positive... It's just like a pistol belt. But it fits inside my pant loops. These are my 511 tactical uh, knee pads. So these go inside my 511 tactical pants. They have a special sewn in pouch. So all I gotta do is just push these down inside that pouch and now I have instant knee pads as a part of my pants. So, um, you know, I don't wear them every day, wear the knee pads every day, but I have them there so that I can, you know, kneel down and get out of line of sight. You know, this is an escape and evasion uh, bag for me. The idea is to disappear into the woods for an extended period of time if need be. And uh, to lose anybody that might be pursuing me just by disappearing. So there's going to be a lot of items in here that you might not have in your regular bug out bag. But this helps me a lot, especially with bad knees. Because if you're going to hide out in the woods, you're going to end up down on all fours, making a fire, building a shelter. And uh, so, yeah, invaluable. Ah, you might have seen this in my What I Got for Christmas video. You'll see a theme in this kit. It's two is one and one is none. And so you saw I had a bandana already. Here's another bandana. And this one actually has all of the edible plants. This comes from wazoosurvival.com. You can get your own. They're very affordable. It has pictures of all of the medicinal and uh, edible plants and a guide to their uses and all the detailed instructions right there on it. So two is one and one is none. I got two of those. Or two of two bandanas anyway. This is the thing that's really close to the top too because if it's raining, the very first thing I want to do is pull my tarp out and throw it down so I can break out my gear underneath the tarp. And um, so, yeah, this is a... Um, this is a nine foot by seven foot ripstop tarp, medium weight, uh, pretty light, but this gives me the shelter that I need. And I'm gonna break away since we're on shelter and show you this other pouch here. This pouch here, clear everything out. I have a big pile of gear when it all comes out of here. Then I get to pack it back in, yay, fun. Down here I have more shelter items. So if I was in a rainy situation, I'd pull my tarp out first, bam, throw it down, and then start reaching for some of this other stuff. Like my ball of paracord. So I have that there ready to go. My zip ties, which will help me uh, tie off the trees and limbs and stretch this tarp and whatever else I need to do with my zip ties. And then this is a standard painter's drop cloth. And it's just super lightweight, clear plastic. But this will help me make what's called a super shelter. And, um, you know, I should be able to uh, really create an enclosure combining this with the tarp. So I have those. And then also in here, you can't rest and you can't, uh, if you're escaping and evading, you can't really let your guard down. And with no dog to watch over you or no one else to be on guard, if you want any sleep, you have to have some of these. 
So what are these? These are signal devices or perimeter alarms. And they work with a they work with a 12 gauge shotgun round. In this case it's a blank, but they'll use a regular round too. Put them right in there. This is not a firearm because uh, it doesn't have a barrel. So uh, it's just this triggering device, but I'd have to put it fully in there. I'd have to cock it, and I don't feel like pulling the pin and, and cocking it right now. But everything I need is also in these pouches with to, to set this perimeter alarm up with all the other things that I have combined. So I can put two of these and cover a 360 degree area where I am camped out. So if anybody approaches, I'll at least be awake. You want to be awake when the visitors arrive, for sure. <laughs> when you're out like that, you want to be awake and aware. So this is going to uh, tip me off to any intruders. <clears throat> Back to the main compartment here. Guess what? More coffee. I'm going to have a ridiculous pile of coffee, and you're going to be like, Sage, you're going to drink that much coffee? But I also have some raspberry fruit roll-ups. So we have the fruit leather here, which is actually a lightweight, good source of energy. Good old-fashioned Jack Links beef jerky. It's not the it's not the best jerky in the world, but it keeps forever. To escape and evade, I might need to make my face the color of my clothing and my background. So this is a five-color camouflage makeup kit, and uh, there's also uh, a mirror in there that could be used for signaling as well. A headlamp. So yeah, you definitely want to have a basic headlamp there, which leads me to another exterior pouch. Because with the headlamp, you need to have batteries. So flip it around again. Over here in the center between my, whoops, everything's falling over. It's an earthquake. I kicked the tripod. Over here, I have uh, batteries, AAA batteries, and I've kind of wrapped them up in, in uh, non-conductive cloth tape so that it prevents them from uh, getting scrambled in there or falling out. And there's, there's I think, four or five in a package there. Oh, I'm taking them all out anyway. Why am I trying to stuff it back in? So I had batteries. This stuff is toilet paper tablets. So these are tiny little compressed paper towels, essentially, that you can use for toilet paper or washing your face. And I got quite a few in here, maybe six or eight in that pouch. And then down here, I didn't show you this earlier, but down here, since we're on flashlights, is my tactical pistol-mounted uh, Surefire, um, or Streamlight, TLR-1. And so that's what I, that mounts to my... Well, now I'm supposed to be showing off about how easy it is. It mounts right on there, bam. So... That's, that's definitely a useful device. Because I recommend pistol-mounted flashlights. So that's in there as well. It does not take double A's. I do not have any backup for that. Uh, I should, but I just didn't, I don't have any right now. So, um, but it's got a fresh battery in it. And I got my headlamp and my extra triple A's for my headlamp. Back to the main compartment. Glasses, because I can't see a dang thing without my glasses. I have an extra set of glasses in here, and they're the next level up in magnification, so um, I can really get down on close work if I need to. Always keep those in there. I got a bad knee, so there's my knee wrap. Can't leave home without that. And here close to the top again is more food. We'll talk about some of this food choices. These are little honey stinger gummy bears, and they're uh, rich in vitamin C, and they have a little energy boost, and I think there's some caffeine in, in there, but that's just going to give you some fuel to get you moving when your tank is kind of empty and you need to go right now. So immediate quick calorie food is something you definitely want to have in your bailout escape and evasion bag. Huh, more coffee. first aid kit. I won't break into this first aid kit, but this is a pretty a pretty complete first aid kit for most things up to and including things that you might need stitches for, but I don't have any sutures in this kit. Um, but there's lots of butterfly closures and that sort of thing in here as well. My Sawyer Mini water filter. Now, I've used this cloth tape again to secure all the parts of the Sawyer Mini together into, and wrap it up in the bladder here. So that's a complete water kit that will filter 1,000, no, 100,000, 100,000 gallons of water. I can filter right there with that little dude. 
supposedly. <clears throat> well, I had a gun. It's inside the thing there, but if I get out to where I'm going, I want to have a holster on my belt so that I can open carry legally and I have the gun on me. The gun's no good if it's laying over there in the bag. So the minute I bug out and hit the trail, this goes on my belt. And it's why one of the reasons I had the extra pistol belt in case I'm not wearing a good belt. But this is my belt uh, rack for my Glock so that I am well armed. As you can see, part of my strategy is to run. But if I need to, I can turn and fight if I have to, if I have to, to buy myself more escape time. Because I'm an old man who walks with a cane. So I might need to plink some rounds back behind me just to ensure that I get deep enough in the woods that people don't feel inclined to follow me. At least and not till they, till they go back and get more friends to help them. And in that amount of time, I'll escape. But if they happen to ding me, you can't, if you own a gun, you should own one of these. This is a rat's tourniquet. Rats, R-A-T-T, -T, tourniquet. A rat's tourniquet was invented by a, uh, uh, a medic, a field medic in Afghanistan and Iraq war. So in Iraq, I think, is where it got started. And this is a bungee cord type of quick uh, um, tourniquet to immediately stop bleeding in your limbs. And you can self-apply this, and it's real fast, and it has saved thousands and thousands of lives in Iraq and saved many people's limbs. So uh, I could do a whole video on rats tourniquets, but go look at one yourself and you'll buy one. If you own a gun or if you have a loved one that carries or owns a gun, you should have a rats tourniquet on you at all times. And that's with the rats tourniquet commercial. Inside here, I also have a basic survival kit. Now, the, I picked this up for like, I don't know, $5 at a uh, state sale. And it looked like a pretty decent kit. It came with everything in it. I did some upgrades to it. And I ended up with what might be a $40 basic survival kit, uh, but it didn't cost me that because I picked it up used. And so what I like about this is that you can hang this up from a tree and, you can, and it's got clear pouches and you can really assess all the tiny minutia items that you have in here. So I'll go over what's in here and what I added. But you've got some toilet paper down here. You've got some sanitary bags. You've got some toilet paper tablets in a tube. If you can see that, that's toilet paper tablet in a tube. Here I've got some personal medication, just some over-the-counter stuff to handle minor stomach ailments and things because uh, you may not be eating food you're used to. So there's some basic medicines in there. Uh, rain poncho, hand crank flashlight, paracord bright orange, whistle and compass. Roll of duct tape. I thought that was kind of cool. And up here is first aid. You got your mask, your gloves, you got soap sheets to wash up. You've got uh, band-aids and tweezers and everything you might need for little boo-boos and whatnot. Remember, two is one and one is none, so I have more first aid kit uh, stuff in here as well as in the main first aid kit. <clears throat> but I added something kind of cool here that's a bit invisible. I'm going to zip it out here and you can see they left me enough room. This is always a little tight coming in and out. It's like giving birth. Come forth. Come forth. Ah. Two is one and one is none. So you saw my big knife on the top of the bag when we got started. Uh, but this is my little Mora companion. So a little Scandi grind stainless steel knife. Great for basic camp chores and food prep. Which we're about to be getting into the long-term portion of this kit. Once again, let's see. We'll move this out of the way. It's a big pile. It's a pile. I have a pile of stuff coming out of here. It's like... Uh, coming out of a clown car more food protein bars in case I get the chance to start a fire there's my uh, uh, there's my uh, dehydrated dinner so I got a hot meal but more snack food high calorie stuff dehydrated fruit big pile of food here <laughs> coffee protein bars I also carry one walkie-talkie. And you're like, Sage, why would you carry one walkie-talkie? I carry one walkie-talkie because it allows me to monitor uh, anybody who might be using the Citizen Band radio. So this is, I think, a 40 channel. So I can check the entire Citizen Band and listen for anyone who might be pursuing me or trying to find out where I'm at. Ultimately, I'd like to replace this with a ham radio and a, uh, and a police scanner all built into one system. But that's a little overpriced for me right now. I'll have to settle for the cheap Walmart walkie-talkie. But it works, and it takes AAA batteries. Concealment holster. If I want to hide the fact that I have a pistol, I also brought a inside the waistband concealment holster in case I want to hide out and not let anybody know I have a gun on me. Sewing kit complete sewing kit 
these, I'll just let you read what it says, and it's self-explanatory. That's what that is. It's, it's toilet paper, wet wipes, disposable bag, hand sanitizer. You know, I got a couple of those. Now, this is a snare kit wrapped in survival cord, survivor cord, Triton survivor cord. Inside the survivor cord is uh, wire for sna making snares, fishing line for catching fish, and also uh, it has a tinder cord for starting fires. So there's tinder cord. It's all inside of the cord itself. And then in here is cable, cable snares. So I have half a dozen cable snares, uh, which are perfect for small animal hunting, and they can do the work while you're taking care of other things to resupply, because this food isn't going to last forever. And I need to have some more food ready to go right now, which leads me to the yo-yo. You've seen this in other videos. Now, snares and yo-yos are illegal unless you're in an emergency situation, but if you're running for your life, then you know, you're not worried about the rules. You're just trying to survive, and in survival situations, there you can get away with this. But uh, this is a spring-loaded reel. Woo, it's windy. It's windy. It's blowing the camera. Wow. This is why I didn't go up in the mountains today. I was going to go up in the mountains, but I ended up staying in the valley. But um, this little guy here is a spring-loaded fishing reel. And it has a trigger on it. And I've, you showed, I've showed this in other videos. Let's just pull some line out and set the trigger. Okay. So now this is attached to fishing line. This is hanging in the water from a limb or on a jug. You can rig these underwater because they're stainless steel. And if they touch it and, they, well, <laughs> you can see if that had a hook on it, it would have got me even if I let go and tried to pull my hand back, it's fast. So there's about four or five of these in there as well. What else is in here? You never know. This is a more recent contribution to my kit. This is a fat wood fire starting kit. So I wanted to have some dry tinder. I didn't want to spend time looking for it. I wanted it on hand. So I took a, pi a pencil box that originally held six pencils. And I took some fat wood, which there's a video on fat wood if you don't know what that is. But it's resin impregnated natural fire starting pine wood from knots and stumps. And I did all the feather sticking work and created all the curls and everything already. And I put it in here with cotton infused... Um, uh, I mean, uh, Vaseline infused cotton balls and a ferrule rod you can see right there. So everything I need to start a fire toot sweet is right there and it ought to go up with just a spark. Just lay it out and get her done even in a rainstorm. So there's that. Which reminds me I've got some stuff on the outside I haven't showed you. <clears throat> Over here in the outside pouch where I can easily get a hold of them are my impact gloves and um, Multicam, so you got to have gloves for handling hot things and working and uh, handling sharp blades and whatnot. Emergency poncho, keep everything dry. Money, I have a wad of money I keep in there, about a hundred bucks usually, just in case I find civilization, I can buy myself a cup of coffee. Over here, I got some bug spray, bug juice to keep the bugs off me, at least temporary. Obviously, I got the big knife wrapped in the survivor cord. I'm missing out, there's a pouch, ah, here it is. Diamond steel knife sharpener, right there, sharpens knives and fishing hooks. And I must have missed it, because somewhere in here is a fishing kit. There it is, I got a fishing kit was inside. Hooks, sinkers, line, uh, uh, grub, baits, spinners, all the things you need, it's wiggly tails, jig tails. And my knife sharp, I mean my, yeah, diamond encrusted, uh, easy lap uh, knife steel for sharpening my knives. <clears throat> fire starters little tinder quick tinder fire starters more of the fire starting kit I'm almost there if I lose you God save our republic because I'm running out of time here on my video I've only got so much time oh there's my favorite lighter two is one and one is none and three is two because there's a little flashlight in my lighter and then that's a uh, cheat there so I don't have to use ferrule rods all the time but just in case ferrule rod and striker I'm almost there two things left uh, last thing is the burnable folding uh, business card so this is made out of uh, kind of an oil impregnated wood and there's also a uh, magnifying glass for starting fires if you don't have any other option you can use the Sun and then is that it one last thing Solar-powered 
phone charger and it also charges my EDC everyday carry flashlight from Pelican so that's a USB that will this will charge 